Thanks for doing this sit down. We're going to talk about physical therapy treatment now, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. That's what I love to do. So we've got Caitlin Buck. <laughs> we've got Allison Gallup. Emily Kelso, Greta, don't forget a Vogel. <laughs> Thanks for cool. sitting down. We're yes. talking about pelvic floor physical therapy treatment. Mm -hmm. The treatment. What Best does it part. look like after the evaluation? This is the good stuff, the meat. Mm -hmm. Right? So, okay. Treatment is really cool because it's really different for everyone, right? But mm -hmm. also there's a, like a pattern of sameness. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's like a method to the madness, but yeah. also, you know, it starts getting, you can get tweaking things for different mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. um, okay. If someone were to ask you, um, what are the types of things that you are doing in a pelvic floor physical treatment? And you were just to throw that information out there. Like what things would you say? Like I would say, oh, I do connective tissue manipulation, which no is not that. how yeah. I would explain it to a patient. So, right. Yeah. So how do you explain that to a patient? What is connective tissue manipulation in a way that a non-provider can understand? Like well, a layman's term. Layman's term mm -hmm. is skin rolling, but still it doesn't yeah. really say a lot. So right. um, the idea is we're picking up the skin and the fat tissue to get down to the fascia, which lays over the muscle to clear up any restrictions and allow blood flow and nerves to flow more yeah. freely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that can affect- And reduce pain. And reduce mm -hmm. pain. People are like, but how does that work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it just does. It it just, it's does. like resets the it's nervous all connected. system. It yeah. resets the whole nervous system because yeah. it's not just for pain. Like it'll help people urinate less often. Yeah. yeah. It'll help mm -hmm. people sleep through the night. They're like, I don't know what you did, yeah. mm -hmm. but people call it magic. Yeah. They call yeah. it voodoo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? but it's also yeah. important to remind them like it hurts. Yeah. It can hurt. Yeah. It can, yeah. can have all their tension yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, it can so also it's not be like a massage. massage. It, it can, can be ticklish. Ticklish. Yes. Yes. yes, a lot of laughing, yeah. a lot of yeah. laughing, yeah. a lot of wiggling, a lot of yeah. yeah. So, so is it okay yeah. to hurt? It's is it okay. okay to hurt in a treatment if you are someone who has pain? Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. And why is that okay? Because a lot of people are not okay with that. Yeah, you gotta release it. Yeah, you, you to gotta get take after care it. of mm -hmm. the issues. Yeah, and it's, it's, a get, problem. it's gonna get better. And, and I tell better. people like the worst treatment is gonna be after worst day number it. one. Exactly. Yeah. You're gonna wake up tomorrow, may not like me. Yeah. You may mm -hmm. have bruising. You may feel like you did like a thousand sit ups yeah. and didn't. And you're like, she just skin rolled me. That's all she did. Yeah. 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 Um, you may feel warm in your belly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it gets better. It gets better. And mm -hmm. each time we do it, you're gonna feel looser. And where do we do it? Everywhere. 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 Abdomen. Right? Yeah. Between the, the ribs and the knees, basically. Really? Yeah. yeah. Front, back, and Front, back, mean, inside. I've even inside. worked up in people's, like, thoracic spine yeah. to get oh, things moving. Oh, I do, too. I'll go all the I've actually the worked on people's, like, feet to get yeah. them moving. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. outside of connective tissue manipulation, what are other types of things that we do with treatments, like, with patients and treatments? Uh, we look at the pelvis and the hips. Yeah. Make mm -hmm. sure the pelvis is correctly symmetrical, as yeah. symmetrical as we can get it, because yeah. that can really affect the nerves um, and pain patterns. Help the joints in it move. Yeah, yeah like if it's not in the right place, you're not going to move yeah. as best you can. And everything's innervated from nerves that originate from the spine. Right. So taking spinal contribution is really important mm -hmm. too. Is there a history of disc issues? Is there a history yeah. of stenosis, nerve compression? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clear that out too. Yeah. Cause that's, that can be a big factor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the hips. Yes. Oh yeah. What's, What's going on at the hip joint? What's going on at the hips? Mm -hmm. yeah. Those muscles that make up part of the pelvic floor musculature attached to the hips. And mm -hmm. I yeah. love seeing those pictures cause I'm like, oh yeah, it's like, directly attached to their hips. I need to know how their hips are moving. Yeah. Not just how their hips move, but like, what is the play like in yeah. the hip mm -hmm. tree, you know? I mean, we're still physical therapists, so yeah. we are yeah. movement specialists. We're just like, weird physical we're just, therapists. We are specialized within our specialty, right? So we- We are we, shunned yeah. physical therapists. So we are the movement methods. is still really important for us. On our own islands. <laughs> so how people stand, how they walk, how they sit, yes. we take that all in consideration. Yes. Posture. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, okay, so do we ever do any internal work? Internal meaning inside vaginas, inside rectums? Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. On yeah. every patient? No. 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 Okay. Because I think that's what a lot of people would be worried about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you're appropriate for it, if you have 
muscle shortening. Yeah. You know, the pelvic floor is muscle, just like your hamstrings and muscle yeah. and your quads and muscle. So you have to stretch it out. So yeah. we'll do almost trigger point release. Um, digitally. Doing the splits is not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I keep telling my male patients can stretch that. and stretch. Yep. It won't help. <laughs> won't help. <laughs> um, so do you do rectal work on women? Yes. Mm -hmm. Always? Sometimes. No. no. Mm -hmm. it just depends on what their symptoms are yeah. and how mm -hmm. we treat it. So. Also, too, they may not tolerate transvaginal palpation mm -hmm. or pelvic floor lengthening. They may not mm -hmm. tolerate a finger in the right. vaginal canal because maybe it hurts so yeah. much. They, they, they can't handle that. tampons, right. speculums. Yeah. They may not handle what mm -hmm. we can do, too. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all the same muscles. So yeah, it's just a different to way it. to access it. Yeah. 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 So there's so many names of diagnoses, right? Mm -hmm. Like a million. And they're coming up with more every second of the day. And some of them mean the same thing, and some of them don't. Some of them are accurate, right? And some of them are just plain wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you know what to do in treatment for your patient, mm -hmm. male or female, um, if there's so many different things people are coming in with? Like, how do you organize your plan of care, your thought process? How do you decide what to do first, what to do next? How do you do that? Well, a lot of it's based on the questions that we asked, right, to come up with our PT diagnoses, tension versus laxity. We see, we treat what we see. What's tension? What's laxity? So tension is when you have muscle restrictions, muscle shortening, okay. um, where a muscle can't maybe fully relax. Muscles are contractile, so uh -huh. they should be able to contract. They should be able to lengthen. So tense muscles must be strong. No. What? No. <laughs> what? You know the answer to that. <laughs> yes. Tense muscles may be weak muscles because they can't contract. It's like yeah. trying Usually to do... are. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. It's yeah. A, that's a great yeah. way because that people understand that, right? Yeah. It's a very functional thing. There's no power use. in that muscle. Exactly. No. If it's already Short. here, mm -hmm. you're going to yeah. like it no more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with the pelvic floor muscles. Mm -hmm. Muscles and muscle still contractile. Mm -hmm. So then, Greta, what's laxity then? A pure lax patient is like your leakage patient with no pain mm -hmm. or no other symptoms going on, and that's just weakness. Yeah, that muscle is not doing its job. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. they're gonna have like when you with push on the muscle, yeah. it doesn't hurt. It doesn't yeah. hurt. It never yeah. hurt. It doesn't yeah. hurt. It um, yeah. yeah, it. They're just like the muscles too bonk. Yeah. Right. yeah, and it doesn't have the power to like contract like a right. muscle should. Right. Mm -hmm. So tension is weak and laxity is weak. It's rare to find a real strong one. It's rare to find <laughs> like a true strong. A, a true yeah. strong. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no. no. Exactly. So I mean, so then if that's the case, who do you give Kegels to? Outside of the men who are coming in for preoperative or postoperative operative physical therapy. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, I don't even give Kegels to 100% of those patients. Oh. Some of them already have pain issues or tension mm -hmm. issues, and right. if I were to give them Kegels, it would make them worse. So right. yeah. that's 90% of men I think I give it to who are gonna have their prostate removed. But outside of that population, who do you, do you ever use Kegels? Yeah. yeah, yeah. On your pure lax laxity patients. So and, yeah, I have patients with fecal incontinence. Mm -hmm. So yes. like just that, they're getting kegels for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and then we have the patients that have leakage because of urgency issues. They have tension, yeah. and so that's causing them leakage. And then what we can do is help dial down the tension. Then they might be appropriate to do kegels at some point in at time, some point. Yeah. but not yeah. initially. Yeah. You have to lengthen before you strengthen. Lengthen before right. you strengthen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Say it again. Lengthen, Lengthen the voice, voice, strengthen. strengthen. Yeah, I know all of you were going to do that. Right. Nice. Um, so, okay. If you have a patient and you've evaluated them, you're talking to them, what do you tell them about how long you're going to see them and how often you're going to see them? How do you decide that? That's very variable. Yeah. Very variable. Very, very variable. variable. It depends on the diagnosis, too. Okay. So, say someone's coming in for leakage. Just leak when I cough, sneeze, and laugh. That's it. I don't have any pain. How long are you going to see that person? Not as Probably. frequently as somebody with tension. Mm -hmm. Could it take right. time to strengthen? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, every couple of weeks. Every couple mm -hmm. of weeks. For how or long could you guess? Two, one to two months at that variable yeah. or that interval. Yeah. yeah, and then space it out. They might not need to come that much, honestly. Mm -hmm. It just depends if they're doing their exercises. Yeah. Um, and just 
everybody's mm -hmm. response differently. It's so. an sure. ongoing assessment. So I yeah, tell sure. my patients, every time I see you, I want to know how you're doing. And yeah. mm -hmm. I want to know if you're just not getting better or if you are and by mm -hmm. how much. Yeah. We ask yeah. a lot of patients, like very, like how, what they percent get, better yeah. are you? If they yeah, get 80% yeah. better in one or two treatments, well, yeah, I'm not going to see you very much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. has that we, ever happened to you, oh, Allie? Yeah. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. really exciting. It's yeah. everybody. <laughs> yeah. You want to um, tell everyone. Yeah. We're 90 better. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so then we can dial it back. If they're scheduled like weekly and they don't, it's not appropriate anymore, yeah. then we say, all right, just come every other week, come every three weeks. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, just keep tabs on mm -hmm. you until you feel like you're. So let me give you fake patient, okay? Guy comes in, he's like, hey, I urinate all the time. I have burning at my anus and my perineum, which is between my scrotum and my anus. I call it my taint. That feels like it's super, super tight. You evaluate them, but you're like, yeah, you tight. Um, I want to know how often are you going to see me and for how long are you going to see me for? I need an answer right now. I want to see you once a week. Okay. For probably four to six weeks at the beginning. Okay. And then... At that point, we'll see. I mean, we'll see each time you come in how much you're progressing. Yeah. But we can probably dial it back every other week. Okay. Just depending on how your symptoms are. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's best once a week with those symptoms. Yeah. So we Pain can really, symptoms. like, mm -hmm. dial down the nervous system. Yeah. You know, that's interesting because I give, I tell people something a little different. I'll be like, I want to see you once a week for 12 weeks. Sorry. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. sound very nice. But yeah. and we could yeah. probably you know see you less often before the 12 weeks mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, i get scared so i tell them 12 weeks and you know we can yeah. always yeah. cancel well, and it's i mean process. it's better to have them yeah. than to not have them yeah. yes yeah. and a lot of times consistency is really helpful for yeah, patients so they true. can get into a consistent schedule that's true that's true that way they can just book out so okay with your women do you feel that treating women um, do you ever involve conversation about hormones? Absolutely. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of that's kind of an interesting area where a lot of pelvic floor physical therapists don't talk about hormones because this is like such a weird niche, such a weird specialty where we do learn about hormones, but everything must go through the doctor. Mm -hmm. And so, you know. I know I'm having conversations with the physician or the nurse practitioner yeah. or the PA about, hey, these are my thoughts. This is what I see. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Are y'all doing that too? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's okay. the benefit of being at Urology Austin because we can have these conversations with right. the urologist. Right. That's true. Yeah. 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 It's really a team approach, right? So everyone can be talking about these cases and, yeah. and get better treatment for the patients, right? Yeah. Before I worked here, I did. I I worked in a private practice, and I will say, if I thought somebody needed to be assessed by their doctor for potential use of hormones, um, that was a week to two week long uh, phone tag game. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so that's really kind of something that I've learned. Like being at Urology Austin has helped that whole process go so Absolutely. much faster, yeah. and it's better for the patient yeah, definitely. you know yeah. so that's really like a it's a really quick cool message thing. to the doctor yeah. exactly yeah yeah, yeah. And they respond quick response. quickly yeah. or they're like yeah. down the hall or it can pull the doctor into <laughs> the room which is incredible yeah. you know mm -hmm. so it's really such a part for patients and for us as providers mm -hmm. what do you do with a patient that has a lot of stress and they say that they're hurting and they notice yeah stress makes my pain worse. Stress makes me urinate more often. Stress makes it burn when I urinate. I notice that. I definitely do notice that. But what do I do? What do I do about that? Biggest, that's tough. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. What you yeah. just did. Yeah. 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 Breathe. Yeah. Breathe. Yeah. 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 And recognize your stressors yeah. too. And also it's a multi-disciplinary approach. Yeah. Do they have somebody they talk to? Yeah. Um, you know, you could go down the medicine route, but also just like recognizing those stressors yeah. mm -hmm. and making a game plan for how to how to deal and how to cope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stress is hard. Mm -hmm. Stress is stressful. People mm -hmm. get stressed if they're getting stressed and yes. they're worried that their pain's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. It's a cycle. Mm -hmm. And a lot of patients we see too are in chronic pain. So chronic. it's years of stress yeah. that you're addressing. It's That's also something to remind them is that if this isn't going to be a two visit fix. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is a process. This yeah. is um, a paradigm shift in the way you think about things. Mm -hmm. and It's peeling back the layers of Absolutely. the onion. Yes. yes. It's onion. Mm -hmm becoming self-aware yeah. like what happens in your body when you're stressed and how to catch that yeah. mm -hmm. or even just like learning 
to check in with themselves. Mm-hmm. Body scanning. Body scanning. What am I yeah. doing? Is my anus tight? Yeah, where's my yeah. anus right now? <laughs> Drop it. <laughs> What's in my throat? I'm just going to say that. What's in my throat? Where's my anus? Yeah, so that's actually a great point. Like, what do you tell your patients to do when it comes to, like, kind of checking in with their bodies? Mm-hmm. Like, what do you actually... It sounds like a lot, but like hourly body scans, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I, like I said, get up out of the chair yeah. to go, go grab a cup of water or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Just check in with your body periodically throughout yeah. the day. Yeah. Cause a lot of times patients don't realize, or they come back and be like, I've been holding tension there mm-hmm. forever. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. they, it's just like just all of a sudden a light turns on yeah. and then they are, they have a lot more body awareness. Yeah. And so they, that's where it, that's huge. I yeah. mean, if they come yes. back and they have that more body awareness of what they're feeling, mm-hmm. yeah. then that mm-hmm. can help out a lot. Well, mm-hmm. there's a lot of resources for that, for meditation mm-hmm. and body scanning and uh-huh. getting help with, um, with that, you mm-hmm. know, digitally. And, and so I try to give them resources for that so they can they can use that and yeah. um it doesn't have to you don't have to spend a lot of time doing that yeah. mm-hmm. it doesn't take um, much yeah so even just yeah. a few minutes just tuning in yeah yeah my favorite thing to tell people is to use most people have an iphone and i'll tell them every waking hour on the hour like if you wake up at 7 then 7 a.m 8 a.m 9 a.m put a little alarm that says relax your abs and relax your anus <laughs> That's and people good. have said they hear my voice when I'm not there. Relax yeah. your abs and relax your anus. Because when your abs are tight, your pelvic floor is tight. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And when your abs are relaxed, your pelvic floor is able to relax better. Mm-hmm. Right. So, okay, so I have had patients tell me, I'm so grateful that I've been able to come to pelvic floor therapy. I wish I had found this years ago. Um, I feel like this is the first time someone's really understood what's going on and can maybe touch my pain Mm -hmm. or um, like you ask me questions that I didn't even think about. Insight. Insight, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Like what are some of, like each of you like, what is something a patient has said like at the beginning or the end of their experience doing pelvic floor physical therapy treatment? Like something maybe you say may help someone else who hears it you know like Greta what have you heard just feeling like they can move more freely Mm -hmm. I mean even after one session of abdominal work Mm -hmm. I had a guy who was like you know I don't feel my rectal pain anymore and I worked on his abs for Mm -hmm. 20 minutes you know and he was like I've been dealing with that for a very long time and I'm I'm just shocked right now it's emotional it's emotional it's very emotional yeah. Women want to tell their girlfriends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, start. You never talk about these things, yeah. and then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. they get comfortable about talking about these things, mm-hmm. and then all their friends are like, "You know, I have this going on. Do you think they could help?" And mm-hmm. so they become little advocates, advocates for us. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. a lot of times people don't really understand the the scope of what we can yeah. address. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. What do you think, Emily? What have people said? Yeah, I mean, all of those things, just that they they never realized how something really kind of simple, whether it's just breathing more or learning to feel, Mm -hmm. you know, what they're doing and checking in and how impactful that is. Um, They're very, they're very appreciative of that because of the, the large impact it has on, on their lives and with their pain. Yeah. Um, yeah, these patients, so. yeah, yeah, they're like heavy with emotion. Yeah. yeah, and this topic is they're so they're vulnerable, and we have yeah, to be yeah. vulnerable as pro- uh, providers too. Um, but I think another thing that you brought up too is just how like pain can travel, and the body is crazy, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so working on one area may relieve something else, and mm-hmm. it's just it's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's all yeah. tied together. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel yeah. like patients get emotional, Caitlin? Do you feel like the pelvic floor is tied in with a lot of the head? Like oh, emotions yeah. and yeah, for sure. past history. And, and that's that's um, often a question I ask in my evals. If someone's dealing with like just a sudden onset of pain uh-huh. or it started five years ago and uh-huh. like, what is going on? What else on? is going on? There's, yeah. I always ask, it was, the, was there a stressful life event? Did you lose a family member or a friend? Like, yeah. what is going on before this happened? Yeah. And I, it's so crazy because over 50% of the patients are like, yeah, they can like, link it to something. I've never thought about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's mm-hmm. where our body's protective of this area, mm-hmm. just naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can't always feel the tension. And so it's there. Mm-hmm. But we got to find out. Mm-hmm. So it's in their heads. 
So this is all in their heads? No. Not in their heads. <laughs> the head plays a part. Your brain is your control center. It's their yeah. mothership. Yeah. 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 But so that's the thing. I think a lot of people patients, feel like board, yeah. feel like they're told. Because they've been around. Yeah. yeah. To some go see people. a psychologist. Go yeah. see something a psychologist. Yeah. There's no infection. Going on. Just a piece of it. Yeah. 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 But there is something very physically it's going for sure. on. Oh, yeah. Definitely. For sure. But it affects your head. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's, or your stress. It's a loop. Yeah. It's a loop. It's a vicious cycle. Your head affects your body, and your body affects your mind. So, sure. But there is definitely in, in our patients, whether they're leakage patients, whether pain patients, whether they're urgency, whatever it is that they come to us for, there's, there's, um, there is a physical thing for yeah. us to address. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Your patients cry. Oh, mm-hmm. my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Not all of them. Every day. A lot all of them, them do. Every day? No. Not all of them, but I always have a Kleenex box of them. Yeah. What yeah. percentage of your patients are crying in treatment? Oh, during treatment? No, it's usually during the eval. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. With, the, with the talking. With Sometimes the talking, during treatment, yeah. but mostly the eval. Mm-hmm. I don't know. 40%. 40%. Per- wow. And it's usually it's usually women. Okay. Uh, but I've had some men here. Because yeah. no one's asked them these questions. Yeah. 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 That's true. It gets heavy. That's true. Yeah. Um, what else do you feel is important to say about treatments? A lot of patients clench or grind their mm-hmm. teeth at night. Mm-hmm. And I tell I them that mm-hmm. this is tied to this. Mm-hmm. And if you can relax your jaw, I teach them how to just, it's mm-hmm. just, it's all, it all, all goes with the it's, body scanning. There's but, actually, I mean, there's um, research yeah. that says so. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. tension here in the neck and the jaw. Yeah. And play mm-hmm. into the pelvic floor. I um I had a patient once where I put my finger internally in the rectum and I asked them to grind their teeth mm-hmm. and I felt the tension. Mm-hmm. I was like, your pelvic floor muscles are super tight around my finger right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was so eye opening for them because they were mm-hmm. like a tooth grinder, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of it was eye opening to show them like, oh, I should get something. Yeah, that's, hard. and that can be constant. Like yeah. jaw clenching. So like during the just, day, like, yeah. go yeah. through the day. And I say, your teeth should never touch unless you're eating. And yes. <laughs> well, I don't they know didn't if I know could that. do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. So um, a common, what are some common questions you get asked? I get asked if I'm on my period, can I come in? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's and a can common they? question. Yeah. Yeah. I say, no, please don't. <laughs> it's really like, yeah, if you're comfortable, I'm comfortable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Periods are not an issue. Mm-hmm. Um, can they come in if they have an infection? So I'm cool with an infection. I don't have to work internally if they right. have an infection. Right. Yeah. It kind of depends. But if they have like a rash, yeah. I don't yeah. want to work on that rash. Right. Right. Just right. avoid you know. that area. If yeah. they have yeah. like an STD outbreak, we avoid mm-hmm. that. You yeah. know, what other types of questions do people ask? Like, can I bring my partner? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They ask that. Yeah. I teach connective tissue work with spouses and partners. I, it's great because mm-hmm. if they find it really helpful in clinic. Mm-hmm. then they can get it done at home. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So mm-hmm. they find it really helpful to... So can that replace what you're doing? Well, especially as we start to wean off physical mm-hmm. therapy, if they're if they're finding that they just need connective tissue work mm-hmm. and the partners can do it at home, they may not need to come in and see me, especially if their symptoms are resolved. You if know? their symptoms are resolved, yeah. yeah. I find it's helpful when people go through like a bout of a flare. They're like, oh my gosh, I was on vacation, and but yeah. my partner was able to help yeah. work on me. Yeah. Yeah. And what I often hear is like, they do it and it's helpful, but it's not as helpful as when you do it. You know, mm-hmm. and that's understandable. Like we've been doing it longer, you know, mm-hmm. and we'll probably go to different locations that they don't know how to go to. Yeah. You sure. know? Yeah. So, what else? What else have you noticed people asking? Because I get asked questions. I'm like, oh, yeah, is there anything that, that they should avoid? Yeah. Yeah, we get that. I get right. that question a lot. Like, you know, if they have a lot of tension in their abdominals and tension in their pelvic floor, I may tell them to lay off the, you know heavy ab work mm-hmm. and focus more on just doing like some cardiovascular yeah, and stuff that move. still gives yeah. them yeah. enjoyment but that's yeah. not bearing down on their ribs all the time You're avoiding yeah. like squats for squats. Yeah. 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 yeah because tightening your glutes all the time yeah yeah, yeah. 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 and also people who have too much tension 
sometimes they don't even tell me that they're doing kegels. Uh-huh. So I have to say, like, are, you, are doing you doing kegels? Yeah. 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 Like, okay, you can stop. Right? Yeah. You know? I think we need to address something we talked about earlier, which was soap usage. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. people are always shocked. Because we kind of said it, but we didn't go into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a fun conversation. Is just I like, like it. Yeah. Like, kind of so No one's ever told yeah. them. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So soap is not great for washing your genitals. Even the stuff. Because women are always like, oh, but I have this like special gentle. summer Eve. Yeah. Summer Eve. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, summer yeah. Eve. Don't use it. Yeah. yeah. It messes with, which the, it messes with the bio. So. Yeah. It messes with the bio. It messes with hormones. It dries stuff out. It makes mm-hmm. it sensitive. Which is the good bacteria. Yeah. yeah we want to keep good. around the good bacteria. So people yeah. are like, but I'll smell. I'm like, no, you're going to smell more using soap because mm-hmm. you're yeah. taking your body's natural defense away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're going to get more infections, more yeah. likely to get yeah. sick, more likely to tear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, more likely to be uncomfortable, more dry. Mm-hmm. That's a huge one. I love talking about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and just using it. waters is yeah. fine. Yeah. Move the yeah. flappy flaps. Yeah. Move everything around. <laughs> Rinse with water. Rinse yeah. with water. Yep. All right. It's pretty good. Yep. All right. Yes. Greta. Good job. Good job, team. Uh, uh, go, team. Uh, 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 oh, wow. That like was dainty. <laughs>